Hey guys, how's it going? I'm Joey from Lock Props. Today we're going to be continuing our series on Tanjiro's Blade from Demon Slayer. Now in my previous video I said that I was going to be making two different handles out of this. Uh, one out of EVA foam and then one with the traditional braiding technique. However though, I tried to make the EVA foam handle and it just wasn't turning out the way I wanted. Anyway, I just decided to just do the braiding technique because it took a lot less time to do. And to be honest, I feel like it was a little bit easier. But regardless though, if you wanted to continue the series with me and you need some of the tools that I used, I'm gonna go ahead and put my affiliate links down below for you so then that way you can follow along and it supports the channel. Speaking of supporting the channel, please be sure to subscribe as well so then that way you can know when the final video comes out because the final video is gonna be talking about painting and gluing everything all together. With that being said, let's get started. After making the blade and the suba, we need to make the handle. I grab the last piece of the template and cut the suba off. I then grab 6mm foam and trace two parts for the handle. I cut on the outside of the sharpie line since I have to sand everything down. Then I line up the middle of the handle. This is where the support rod is going to go. Just like in the first video, we have to make a trench in the foam to allow the rod to sit in. I cut where the middle of the line is with a 45 degree angle, but not going all the way through. I take some blue painters tape and fold it inside out so I can glue the pieces without them moving around. After doing two coats and they are pretty dry, I begin to piece together. I start on one end, lining up the edge and also the trench as I go along. I keep an eye on the middle and make sure it matches to the end. I also do a test fit to make sure the rod fully goes in and I start sanding and shaping the handle. I start by sanding the sides and the edges down with the 80 grit belt sander and then I switch my belt out with a 1000 grit to smooth everything out. I take the heat gun to the foam to shrink the pores, making it ready for sealing and painting. I put four layers of Plasti Dip on the handle and then I sprayed it with Montana White Primer. I will be going to my airbrush for the next part and using the red wicked color for the red that's under the wrap. Since this is water based paint, I will add a little bit of water and mix it around until the paint becomes the consistency of milk. I do a light layer of paint and then on the second coat I completely cover the piece in red. For the braiding, I grab some super glue and a braid specifically for handles I found on Amazon. Starting at the top, I super glued down the top middle section, just so it stays in place. I know it's considered a little bit cheating, but otherwise it will lose its spot and loosen over time. If I put super glue in certain areas throughout the handle, then I know it will stay in place for multiple conventions and I don't have to worry about it. So to begin the wrapping, I bring both sides around and start with the left or right. Now, whatever side I start with, I have to start that side when I flip over the handle. In this case, I started with the left side, so that means I have to start with the left side every time. I take the lace, and I twisted the lace upwards twice. Then, I pinned it with my thumb, and brought the right lace over, and also twisted it upward twice. Trying my best to keep the knots in the middle. Keeping the lace as tight as possible, I brought them around to the other side and repeated until I got to the bottom. Once I got to the bottom, I trimmed down the excess cord and glued down the end to the top. And there we have the wrap. But wait, there's more. I noticed that the sword has a silver pommel at the bottom, so we will need to make that. I brought out some scrap 2mm EVA foam. I wrap the end of the handle and make a line so I know how long the foam should be. 
I then used the lines of my cutting mat to straighten the cut on the sides. I apply some contact cement to the end of the piece I just cut out and wait for that to dry. While it's doing that, I make a mark about a quarter inch past the handle. I want extra foam at the end so I can sand it down. Then I use the straight edge to cut straight down the middle where I made my mark. With the barge cement dry, I piece together the ends I glued earlier. It seems like the pommel ended up being just about an inch. Now we do a test fit. Seems like it fits. So now we have to cover the end. So I took some extra 6mm foam that was left over from the handle and pressed the butt of the handle on top of the foam. I then traced around it. Using my box cutter, I cut out the piece and sanded down the edges. I coat half the inside of the 2mm foam with barge and also barge the outside edge of the oval and piece them together. I then took my Dremel and began sanding the corners and edges of the pommel. To try and cover the seam lines as much as I could, I used quick seal and some water to cover the piece. Then I put four coats of Plasti Dip on it. I also noticed from the anime that the pommel has a little cutout on each side. So I grabbed the end of my caliper since this was a square end. If you don't have that tool, you could just cut out a half inch square out of each side of the pommel. Using some of the leftover lace, I cut two one inch pieces and used the lighter to singe the ends. And then I put super glue on it and folded it in half and placed it where the opening where the square was cut out. On Tanjiro's blade, the middle is wrapped in black. I just counted how many red diamonds I had on the handle. I counted 18 on mine, so I'll put the wrap 6 diamonds up from each end. I had some goatskin leather that I thought would be perfect for this. I lined up the hide, cut out a straight line, and then used the ruler. Since the ruler was 1 inch wide, I used it to make a strip. Then I squared off the ends. Now, when doing a wrap like this, the ends need to be tapered down for a more clean look. I grabbed my ruler, lined the corner, and had the end go about 4 inches down on the right side and made this cut for both sides. I always recommend practicing how you're going to wrap your handle and make sure that it's spaced evenly. Once you feel like you got it down, then we can get to gluing. I will put two coats of barge on the leather side and then I'll take some painters tape to mark where I want the wrap to begin and it also covers up the area where I don't want the glue to go. Once they're semi dry, I begin. I go slow, making sure the glue is holding when I do this. I focus on the edge, making sure it overlaps the same space throughout. Whew! Wow, that was a lot of work. Well, I'm really happy with how this turned out. For this being my first time doing the braiding technique, I feel like that this came out really well, and I'm glad that I used the leather in the middle here, just because it adds a lot more depth to this handle and a little bit more texture to it. So the next video is going to be me painting it and putting it all together. If you wanna stay up to date about that, please be sure to hit the notification bell so then that way you can know when that video goes live. And I will see you guys in that video. Bye-bye. Oh God.